We are joined by Malcolm Brogdon of the Milwaukee Bucks. What's up, man? What's going on? Oh, man, good to have you here. Bucks are in town to play the Lakers on Friday night. Uh, we're going to ask you about a bunch of stuff on the court, but I want to start with this uh, because this is really cool you're doing this. You founded the Hoops 2.0 to raise money and awareness for a clean water initiative in East Africa. Me being East African, I thought this was so awesome of you. But I was curious, how did you get involved in this? Um, so, you know, I'm a former UVA alum. Um, but before me, years before me, Chris Long, who plays for the Philadelphia Eagles, um, started an organization called Water Boys, a nonprofit that, like you said, um, builds clean water wells in Africa. Um, and I saw the opportunity to sort of get involved with him. He's a great guy. Um, and he allowed me to sort of create my side of the program in the NBA and, and take it on. Did you cold called him, or how did that work? It's really my agent oh, reaching out to his people. Yeah. My yeah. people, your people. <laughs> yeah. So I saw you guys in Sacramento yesterday. You guys were much improved from last season. Added Meritish. How, how do you measure success with this team? Is it championship or bust? Or what, what do you guys... Uh, what do you guys say? Man, I, I think right now we're focused on, uh, you know, finishing the season strong, but then getting out of the first round. I think that's been the knock on us in the past couple years. We've been talented, we've been young, all that, but we haven't made it out of the first round. So I think we'll have a lot of doubt until we do that. Now, this week, Giannis retook the lead as favorite for MVP. How has his game really been at another level this year? And also, how has it been you guys, the snipers on the outside, facilitated that as well? Uh, you know, I think it's been a it's been a sort of combination of things. I think Giannis is, has grown as a player, but I think as a leader, vocally, um, leading by example, talking to guys, communicating, I think he's been even better this season. Um, but I think we have a new coach that's been phenomenal. I think the system he's put in place for us has been perfect for guys like Brooke, guys like me, guys that like to spread the floor, but also, you know, drive to the basket. Th does Giannis care, or is he just out there playing? Giannis cares. Giannis cares, for sure. But he also, he's going to go out there and do what he does every right. night. But that's, that's how he gets his MVP going. Right. Yeah, well, I'm the vice president of the WNBA. Oh, so you got a stun on everybody. No, no, go. there's a purpose for this, okay? <laughs> you were the newly elected vice president yeah, oh, of the yeah. NBPA. Thank you, thank you. Why did you choose to join the union? Um, I think they're doing great things. I think that's sort of the future for the players in the NBA, um, having a good PA, having good people that um, can negotiate for us and also just have our back when we're in, you know, whether it's contract negotiations or whatever. What are the goals, the vision of this new group of guys? Uh, really to facilitate whatever the players feel like they need. Um, you know, a lot of it is, has been what people see as a CBA, the contracts, um, making sure that it's tilted towards the players, make, like revenue share, stuff like that. Um, it's important to, you know, make sure that the players are taken care of. Can I ask a question for the kids? Absolutely. You leading the league in uh, free throw shooting, man. If, what would you tell a kid that struggled in free throw shooting like myself? And I, myself currently. It, I we got two kids right here, Phil. <laughs> uh, for me, I can't speak for everybody. I think free throw shooting is about um, confidence and repetition. And the more you, the more repetitions you shoot, I mean, the more confidence you'll build. All right. Thank you. It's too late. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark, no, now all you need is a time machine. <laughs> and then you go, we, I'm it, good. It, it I might got still it. work. It I'm going to say it was you, Malcolm, that, that fixed my shy. Well, let, let's do We got a, a little ritual that we do here whenever we have a guest. It's called, What Were You Thinking? And so we're going to uh -oh. run this game right here. What were you thinking? Tell the truth. When you dunked the LeBron truth. back in 2016. <laughs> Tell the but truth. We're going to watch. Hold on. Let's, let's let America, if they forgot what it looked like, it looked like this. And he was a rookie, too, right? Oh. Yes. Wait. Oh. Oh! Yeah. Reverse! The fake DHO come reverse, throw it hey. down right on his head. Come on, man. Tell the hey. What were you thinking? Man, so that was not a fake DHO. I was trying to hand the ball off to Jabari because I was panicked at the end of the shot. Oh. Jabari, Jabari didn't want it, so I had to just drive it. I wasn't sure if it was LeBron trailing me or what, but I knew I had to go up hard because there was someone going to be trying to block it. And it happened to be LeBron when I turned around. And Iconic. So when and you, you realized that was him. Yeah. What happened? I didn't want to look back at him. It's just, it's a, it's a respect factor. Like, I'm not about to look back at that. Dude. You got that poster at home frame? I don't, but my brother actually got it put on a T-shirt. Yes, sir. So he was wearing it at one of my games in the past couple of seasons. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Let me ask you something. You guys are playing the Lakers tomorrow. Their backs are against the wall. You guys are obviously pushing for a number one seed and maybe a number one overall seed, but the Lakers are fighting for their playoff lives. you expect them to come out and give you guys a fight? For sure. I think they'll be hungry. Um, you know, I think they have LeBron James, so... Um, they will definitely put up a fight, but, uh, you know, I think we're hungry. I think that's been one of the, 
biggest things for us this season is we've remained hungry. We've remained playing at a high level. Is that something that you guys carry along with the, the fact that you haven't been out of the first round, to, obviously since you've been there, but it's been a while in Milwaukee since that team has moved forward in the playoffs. Is that something that is a thing that you guys talk about? Absolutely. Um, a chip on our shoulders. We try to play with that every night. Um, it's important to come out and play hard. You're playing pros every night, whether or not the team is in uh, the race for the playoffs or not. You know, you're playing uh, professionals every day. And speaking of chip on the shoulder, how about load? Are you worried about Giannis's load? I know he's producing. You look at the numbers, 27, 13, and 7 or so. Are you worried about the load, or do you think he's really a Greek freak and is proven to make this run as well? I think he's. I think he is. He is the Greek freak. But I also think he is human. Um, but I also think we have a coach that manages our loads really well. Um, that plays us a certain amount of minutes, really every game. He does a great job, better than any coach I've played for in terms of managing people's minutes. Is there a conversation you guys are having or going to have? You feel like at some point about, hey, we've got let's say the number one seed locked up. Maybe we need to start sitting some guys. I think that will be a conversation um, that's needed to be had. But I think at this point we got to get there first. Are we, are we underestimating what Bledsoe's doing? No, nah, I think Bledsoe is, is great. I, I think he's been terrific. I think he's No, I said, but are we underestimating what he's doing? I don't know what y'all are saying. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah, telling yeah. you what that's I think. That's a good answer. Good. That's a, good. That's a good. guy who's going to run for office one day. <laughs>